Oh, 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 Alice, Alice, I've come for you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Alright, let's skip this shit. Let's get it going with this. <laughs> Rest it like chestnuts right before the eyes. Alright. Pendulamic fucking key again. We're gonna blast through this. We're gonna blast it. Is that better? Good. I'm on a rooftop. I'm on a roof. <laughs> oh, no, this. Let's go over it. I want to go again to Wonderland for fuck's sake. Come on. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Chalkboard lessons offer important tips for noobs. Ah, oh, there we go. And she's wearing a. Uh, a sort of a new rendition of the classic dress used in the first one because this game is so aesthetically pleasing to the eye that they neglected to actually put in real gameplay. <laughs> but you'll see, you'll see as we go on, there is like next to no gameplay, like real gameplay. Well, there is, but it's all puzzles and stuff. And just kind of like jumping a lot, basically. It's pretty much like a first game. Blasted cat, don't try to bully me. I'm very much on edge. Oh. Mm. I like the Cheshire cat. I wish I could talk like that. But you know I can be. <laughs> <laughs> Abdomen hope that the Lord reigns in this wonderland. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Alright, so pretty much this is the entire game. The end. <laughs> no, seriously, but look at this kid. You seen this guy over here? Whoa, what it takes flight. Where's he going? I don't know where he's gone. But he's blasted off into oblivion there. Oh, wait, hang on. I think, isn't there like a flower over here or something? Nah, that's not. No, that's not. Okay. Yes, you can double jump. And guess what? If you have a better keyboard, you can do more. Except this is a wireless keyboard, so it kind of sucks. Not my fault, not my keyboard. <laughs> It's press space bar to jump. What? What? What kind of a novelty is that? It's pressing space bar in a game to press jump. Whoa! I just pre I just pressed space bar and I jumped. Press space bar again while jumping to twirl. Oh shit! Wow. <laughs> All right. So there's some creepy kid here, but she's not there now. I guess you have to follow her. Because um, that's what this game is about. Linear storyline that, like, pretty much tells, it's like, it's spoon feeding you where to go at all times. It's like, this is where you must go. This is what you must do. And if you don't get it, then fuck you. Ah, it rhymes. That's awesome. Here again, we're gonna get some Pierre. Drink me on the go. Whatever drink me is. I've never heard of that one. Looks kind of like some kind of grape liqueur. Plunge in that pool is in order. Really? Really now. I like his tattoos. I think I'd like tattoos like that. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, now we get Shrinking Power, a new addition to this game series thing. Even though, actually, I don't believe this game is by the original people who did American McGee's Alice originally, because American McGee did not do this game. It was someone else. It was a uh, freaking 
spicy horse or whatever. I don't know. It's some crazy Chinese, Japanese, Asian writing. I don't know. And look, we can do this. We can go blasting through tunnels. Ripping the very fabric of time and space apart. Oh my god. And look, secret writings on the wall. What? 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 But what of this flower? Oh, secret tip. You go inside and you get health back whenever you're low on health. You stay in there, it recharges all of your health if you want. But then when you exit it, boom. You get you get teeth. Almost said coins, because that seems the more logical choice rather than having teeth as currency. I'm sorry, I've never been in a cannibal clan before. I've actually had to, you know, use teeth as currency to kill my victims, skin them, scalp them, and rip their teeth out of their dismembered heads, and then go down the shops and use their teeth as currency. That's never actually crossed my mind. Until this game, however. I mean, it, that's what it does. It makes you think outside of the regular realms of thought, which is good. It's slightly disturbing, but it's good. Everyone needs to be disturbed from time to time. Because if you don't get disturbed, then you'll never get anything done. Oh, and this, by the way, is like the... Hang on, why can't I attack that? Is there like... Oh, yeah, because on the second run through... Oh, wait, do, no, I don't have my Vorpal Blade. Oh, okay. Yeah, because on the second run through of the game, when you have like... When you complete the game, you get unlock weapons and stuff, so you have like weapons and shit at the start of the game. Like all weapons. And you could actually like crack that open if you wanted. But this is actually the easiest, and I'm not even underestimating, like, understating that at all. This is the easiest sliding puzzle in the entire game. Like, you might, you might think that this is too easy, in fact. Well, you're right. This is slightly too easy. And it's just lulling you further into that false sense of hope and security. And eventually it will crush all of your dreams with a river of blood and some horrible skeletal beast which I believe to be the Jabberwocky in lore I think it is the Jabberwocky because in the poem of the Jabberwocky they talk of the Vorpal Blade and there it is you retrieve the Vorpal Blade from the body of the dead Jabberwocky I realize that these are all my own assumptions and may have no like bearing whatsoever on actual Alice lore or uh, legend or anything uh, fiction or non-fiction or uh, canical or not. Uh, I don't know. Go the vorpal blade goes snicker snack. It leaves them dead, as seen in a previous poem. So that's why I believe that is the Jabberwocky. Even though it actually looks nothing like the original uh, artist's rendition in the original book. The original rendition it made it look more like a dinosaur. Because dinosaurs were quite popular at the time. And look, it's going... Oh! Oh, the aesthetics. Oh, look! It's like a horror movie in action. Look at that. Actually, hang on, look at that. That is terrible. I just noticed that. Oh my god. One-sided textures. And poor animation. Tisk tisk. And that's not even a bug. That's like the actual thing. Fight or flight, Alice. Fight or flight. You know what? I'm gonna fight these empty shells and get some teeth. Recommendation of the day: maybe upgrade your Vorpal blade to level two, and then save all of your teeth for um, pretty much 
everything else but the bubble blade. Because, I mean, it is fast. A lot of people argue, oh, well, you know, you can deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time with it. You know, it's like reliable, it's there. But in reality, it, the hobby horse, much more powerful. Much, a lot better. You can break through guard blocks and everything with it. Uh, the, what do you call it? The freaking T gun. The T cannon thingy. Now that's the boy. Press caps lock. You see, you have to press caps lock to focus on an enemy, otherwise that ah, tutorial did go away. That's good. We better say, otherwise it won't go away. Sometimes it doesn't. So you actually have to follow it. What it says. Press lift shift to dodge. And you do that in butterflies. This. Die. Die. Meh. Okay. Uh, yeah, the T cannon, a lot more effective as a weapon than the pepper grinder. I would say, because it has a blast radius, for instance, you know. Um, switching between the pepper grinder and the T cannon is always a good, uh, good move. Uh, with lots of enemies, in my opinion. So yeah, hands down, the uh, hobby horse the boyo without a question without a shadow of a doubt and uh, ah, here's, here's a good bit because this keyboard is crap while jumping press and hold spacebar to initiate Alice's float no to further extend float press and hold spacebar again while jumping why should I what is this why are you telling me the